The year is 2008, and MMA is in its infancy in many ways. It's half the size that it is today. Join me as we watch True Life, I'm an MMA Fighter. That's it. Look who it is. My man, Eddie Bravo, with the carrying cut. Blah, 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 blah. Smoking weed, blowing out his knees, putting himself in the lotus position. We love him. And by the way, check out his conspiracy theories on YouTube. They're hilarious. In this episode of True Life, you'll meet three MMA hopefuls laying everything on the Kick line hope. in fights that will make or break their careers. I don't really tell many people that I'm a fighter. Ian is a college student who's also an undefeated amateur fighter. He told me it'd be really difficult, but I didn't think it'd be this hard. He's now preparing for his first professional bout against the best opponent he's ever faced. Oh my God, he's fighting his dad. Frankie's never lost in the lightweight ranks of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Mark Henry is coach. Kit Cope is a former Muay Thai boxing world champion who wants to be an MMA star. Yeah! But injuries have sidelined Kit for over a year, and this is his last shot at making his dream come true. Colorado boy, so you know he's gonna have good cardio with that high altitude, 100%. And I'm a mixed martial artist. I don't really tell many people that I'm a fighter, just because, I don't know, I just like to befriend people first. I'm a student at Colorado I like State him already. University. I live a pretty normal life, except that I want to be people up for a living. Growing up, I guess I got a little tougher because I had two older brothers. I wrestled from eighth grade all the way up to my senior year in high school. Got to college and started getting a little antsy, wanted to get back into something. Tap out shirt fight. spotting, tap out shirt spotting, let's go. Camouflage, I remember that exact shirt. MMA is the ultimate combination of all martial arts. One minute you're boxing and the next you're on the ground grappling. Makes for a very exciting competition. Wild pad man. He's moving too much. Too crazy for me. Kind of excited to see how she handles it. So awkward, you know, they tell the fighters, shadow box while we film you for the promo. And you can tell he's not comfortable. One of your thong slippers bothers me. Two baggy pants. Baggy pants, thong slippers really irritates me too. Let's go over something else. He's looking down at the floor. It's the first thing you don't want to do. It shows that you're not confident. The next one, I forgot the number we're on. Too many elbows. Too many elbows. <laughs> Undefeated Ian Stonehouse, six and zero, to fight the former lightweight. Bob, champion, how awkward? Nathan how awkward Gates, is it? Tell me how awkward it is. Right now, I'm an amateur. I want you to stand there, and I want you to shadow box behind your opponent. Past. These fighters watch these videos. I've had a few comments from people we've covered in the past, and I try to be mild mannered, but I'm sure he would agree that that shadow boxing is fucking hilarious, <laughs> man. I'm just gonna share this with you personally. If you watch my content on this channel, you see, oh, he does a lot of cage wrestling. My Patreon, if you want to check that out, patreon.com slash Steven Strangers, people pin comment. I do tons of cage wrestling, but I actually prefer to fight in a ring. I love fighting in a ring and it takes away a big tool of mine, but I do enjoy it. So let's see how this goes. You won't see any kind of pins against the wall, but it's not possible. Reminds me of the old school Pride FC days. And a big inside leg kick by Stonehouse. Beautiful, man. I tell you what, we can say what we want about him. He, uh, he, he lets his hands go and he ends up in the turtle position landing good ground on pound here. Excellent job. And this is a, he tapped out. The referee jumped in, but he also tapped out. A lot could be said for just being super aggressive in that top turtle position. It happens. He seems like he cut his opponent and that probably scared the shit out of him. If you haven't seen your blood before, he's cut. He's cut, man. By the way, that's how big our fight shorts used to be. They used to be down to our ankles. They look like baggy capris. My name is Frankie Edgar. I fight in the 155 pound weight division in the UFC. There you go. Being a professional mixed martial artist means that I get paid to kick people's ass. Thanks, brother. Hey, anytime, man. Thanks, bro. I'm undefeated. Ugh, guys trying to be tough. Thanks for the autograph. I could take you if I wanted to. Thanks for the autograph, but I can take you if I wanted to. That's the issue with MMA fans. They all think they can take the fighters, especially in this era. Bunch of f***ing boneheads. It's really not like that. Oh man, different training. I'm sure he's not doing this now, this kind of training. This was popular back in 2008. It's enough to get by, but I'm looking to get to the next level. With my wedding being 10 days after my fight, I gotta make sure I stay focused. <laughs> Keep that eye right He's on. always had the skill. Just look how good Frank, he throws his combinations, he moves his head while he's punching, and he always creates an angle after he punches. Four, three, two, one. 
Peace. This is the first time I ever saw Kit Cope. Cope was when he actually starred on True Life. I'm a Muay Thai fighter. I might have to cover that episode. This is my introduction to him, and I thought he was a little bit of a pompous asshole at the time, but I was really impressed by the fact that he was doing essentially some form of bare knuckle kickboxing at the time. I'm a Muay Thai. World champion. Now it's time for me to dominate the world of MMA. He's actually a coach now. He does stand-up coaching for a lot of MMA fighters. So I was forced to get a job, like a real job. A real job? Hell no. F*** out of here. We don't work. Get out of here with that work. Take that down a block, Kip. Hell no. I'm the LA Boxing Franchise Corporation. A deter for Steven Strangles, people. Subscribe now. Doing that resistance training, man. Shadow boxing, Stringing running. Your legs or your arms. That's really bending, cool. Twisting. It's all just gnarly with this thing. I finally booked a fight two months from now. Dude. Wow, that's way Work different training. I've never seen this time. in my life, and unless I... Had... A friend of mine, Eddie Bravo, who just happens to be a jiu-jitsu expert, is in town. Blowing straight ganja out the who's back of the van when he's in town. So who's this guy to fight? Ah, Eddie Bravo, jiu-jitsu master, love to see it. Short little dude, but super stocky. Ton of fights, dude. He's got like 50 fights. So, you know, he's one of those guys that's not going to get the jitters. Seems like he likes to brawl. Yeah, he gets out there and brawl to swing. This guy. Why, Steve? Why are you being so hateful? Why? Did I have to answer this? He's, he's bringing the fight. It's all growing knees and hips, so you got to be able to go. So useless. So notice this triangle here, for instance. This is what should have been fixed. The angle needs to be changed. Even if you keep the right arm on the hip, you have to make sure that your left knee is above the shoulder. This creates a really tight closed wedge and gets to strangle, but you need an angle change. You also should never be pulling on top of your foot. That's just not the proper technique. There's like fundamental issues that are far more important to address instead of throwing your legs up like a yogi. There you go, bam, done, son. That's it. A couple more months of this kind of training is going to put me completely over my opponent's head. If I lose again, I'm a loser. It's just not who I am. Thank you, sir. Very much so. It was an honor. Get on the wall, come on! Wow, Get pushing in Colorado. I can only train part-time because I'm still in college and I'm not making any money fighting yet. Drop out! You gotta commit everything. I want you sacrificing your education, your financial future, and your brain cells. <laughs> Are we tired, girls? Let's go. <laughs> My first pro fight is a month away. Pro fighters are beasts. Your fights are won and lost here. When you're tired, push harder. Nice. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little old school, the style of training they're doing, circuit related. But somewhere in my heart, I still appreciate this kind of training. You know, these guys always come in in shape. I just hope I can train hard enough to get where I need to be. Yeah, but see, just in lieu of technique sometimes though, which bothers me, right? The elbows are just... Still nah. keeps going priority. Put your hands up, guys. Pull the air in your lungs. Here you go, I'm gonna take a shower and try to hit the books. College, a breeding ground for idiots. You gotta not give in to that pressure and do my schoolwork. And that's why you're gonna win, my man. We're Being pumped to see it. My fight's less than two months away. I've been training nonstop. Go. So chop it. Here you go. Frankie Edgar's always been known for being in tremendous physical condition. I'm doing everything I can to make sure I'm in the best shape of my life. When they're both on, in a Frank, cage, him quick, and someone quick, else, quick, quick, I've never quick. seen him not be the superior yeah, conditioned athlete. We're working out again. Yo, Nate Diaz! My Shout out to Nate Diaz! You would not think these two personalities would get along. Nate being a surreal dude, Kit being sort of a braggadocious, kind of in-your-face personality. They, you would think they would clash, but... I've fought on way more serious injuries. Look at the shirt. It says everything you need to know about him. For f**k's sake. I don't want to say that. I mean, I haven't really been thinking about the wedding, but... I mean, the fight kind of takes my mind off the wedding. Both of us will think about the wedding after the fight. 
it really is something when you have a woman that has your back and supports you and Frankie has that and I believe they're still together with a family and it's just awesome to see you know where he was able to go with that support a lot of fighters think they should be alone and isolated and from my experience having someone that you love that you can count on only makes you a better version of yourself heading to Wayne's right now this is back when he fought at 155 which go, is cool because he didn't have to cut any weight serious, he was the only the fighter on the state. roster that didn't cut weight sure, but he wasn't really draining himself much he was fighting much bigger guys I think he fights Gray Maynard in this event and they have some of the best fights ever these guys they fought like three times I believe brutal Joe Rogan I'm a mess already it's only the way Ray Maynard does not get enough respect from modern UFC fans. Most of you don't even know who he is, and that bothers me. Gray Maynard was a scary human being. He had good boxing, ridiculous wrestling, so strong, always in good shape, had an iron chin. Now, his chin degraded over time because of the way he sparred and the way he fought, but I don't think enough respect is put on Gray Maynard's name, so I'm just here to do that. He's a great wrestler. He's a pretty big physical guy. And huge. Stylistically, I think we're pretty evenly matched. The first professional fight is this weekend, and I have to get my weight down to 159. No way to live. I usually walk around at uh, 180 pounds. Be careful with the salt. Really hard for the last Sodium, you're going to be weeks. retaining water. Eating one egg at night. You can call me uh, Nutritionist ass. Williams over here. I'm going to make one of my own in my car. All right, this is an old shout out to one of our favorite characters on MTV Cage. That'll be linked to the end of the video, but Wesley was cutting weight in his car, and a lot of fighters at the lower levels are forced to do this because they don't have access to a sauna. So, we're seeing it yet again. To get to the point you want to, and I want to be a great fighter, so. This is the kind of stuff it takes. There's a camera guy in there just smelling his balls. You know, the, the camera's haywiring because of the heat. Right oh, there. no. Gotta get down to 155, and I gotta tinkle just a little bit. 58 and a quarter. I've gotta spend the next hour or so sweating it out. Thong slippers. He's losing for those 100% that he's losing. I know that war is imminent. Now it's really David just Cochran's coming in hot, ready to go. Hold. I mean, I don't know if Kit has the ground game and the grappling to really deal with uh, this guy, My Cochran. My game plan was to dance around the outside and dink on him from long range until I hit him with something that turned him cross-eyed and then swoop in to take advantage of him. Hop forward. Boom. Right hook. Sock him Switch right his stances in the back there. of the job. He recovered a little bit and came right back out at me. Nice. Goes to the tie plum, starts delivering knees immediately. Put a couple of knees into his gullet. Nice. Knees, see, knees. see what his opponent's doing, which is just wailing to the body as someone has a tie plum on you. It's really not a good strategy because you're not addressing the tie, right? Clear the tie, then go to your boxing. Or clear the tie, then go to your knees or your wrestling. I thought to myself, okay, he's kind of confused right now. Let's get after him. Beautiful work by Kit. Beautiful work. No, no. Come on, Kit Cope. Come on, Kit Cope from the past. Oh, my God. I fell down. Not where I'd planned on being. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm on my back. Come on, let's see a rubber guard. It's jujitsu time. And I'm just thinking, I know that I have the skills in there. But am I going to be able to use them right now? I was unsure of my ability to control the fight. The event. fact that you were able to get that leg around his shoulder when you deliberately controlled his wrist tells me a Cochran is not a good fighter. He, you're holding the wrist. You're like, I'm going to triangle you, and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't posture. He doesn't limp arm out. I mean, come on. Let's go! Right Frank Yeager, baby. We're in the I'm UFC. Stitch focus. Duran, by the way. Phenomenal person. I met him at Johnny Taco's boxing gym in Las Vegas. I was training at Johnny Taco's and such a nice guy. I'm basically by myself in the gym shadow boxing and he walks by me and I knew who he was, but I wasn't gonna be like, hey now what's going on? He goes, hey kid. I turn around, he goes, nice jab, man, nice jab. And I always remember that. He went out of his way to tell some nobody that, you know, what you're doing is great. And then he left the gym, he got in his SUV and left. I remember that and stitched around, good guy, solid human being. If you're Latino, as they come out, what happens here? Yeah. was to get in his face, fight my fight, and really push the pace. 
Patience. See how good Frankie punches in combination? He's always been great at that. Switch high kick. Keeping Ray Maynard on the back foot's a great idea because he's so big. You don't want a big guy coming forward confidently on you. Oh, Gray Maynard hits the double leg and then slides up to the hips. You know what? I see a little bit on Frankie Edgar's eye as well. I felt we were trading pretty good. I felt I was pushing the pace more. The round was pretty close. Nice work. Misdirection gets the takedown off the underhook. Excellent job by Frankie Edgar. Oh, Maynard just goes, I'm getting up now. Oh, you can't get caught in front of a guy that big. I wasn't making the adjustments I needed to make. Into the second round, I didn't feel I had it sewn up at all. Don't stay in front of him and wait. Come on, Frankie! Move it. Two, two. You get him close. Two, two. This is yours. It's the last round. After everything I've been through, the moment's finally here. Let you see if I have what it takes. Come on, you gotta beat this guy. He's as old as your dad. And he comes out with a right arm down by his ankle. He better not win this fight coming out thinking he's Mayweather. And I love it. I love it. He gets dropped already with a leg kick. Looks to secure the back. double leg. Feel the strength. Yeah, you got that old man he strength. pushing against me, and I used his momentum, and I threw him over. All right. That was just sloppy. Now I'm positioned by Ian Stonehouse, getting to work with the ground and pound, creating space by cross-facing with his free arm. And then, uh, this guy is cooked. Yo, look at his leg. He tried to do the old school Tiyoshi Kasaka escape, where you just throw your legs over the waist from mount, but that didn't work this time because it left his face unguarded. And Ian Stonehouse let go with the bombs, man. Let's go, baby. We're back here with Kit Cook so working from his back using his 10th planet jujitsu. Locks Before, up the triangle. I would have been kind of in a panic. But this time, I know that I've got the jujitsu skills that I need. Do you? I caught that elbow back. Boom. Nice elbow across the fox. Nice sharp elbow. Look at this. Boom. Right across his Watch forehead. You. Cross, pulled the head against the leg. Bob's your uncle. He tapped out. Excellent job by Kit Cope getting the triangle finish. Good on him, man. I was nervous for a second. Oh my God. You're shaking, girl. I know. Get off my go. Frankie wrestles up. Excellent job. Wizarding now. Frankie's wrestling up from the bottom position. I definitely felt some frustration. Grace so strong. He's strong. He really wasn't doing much damage, but he did a really good job. Uh, not letting That's me get a up. win. Just see about ability to control and control where the fight takes place. Most importantly, it's going to dictate who wins the fight. Damn, man, I do remember this. I remember those shorts that he's wearing. Actually, great man. He controlled me pretty good that round. I know it's tough for everyone. They have a wedding coming up too, and there's cameras in your house leading up to the fight. So you're supposed to have that Cinderella story where you win, but yeah, you know, reality's the tough sometimes. Decision, Gray well, on the flip side, Frankie ends up becoming a world-class future Hall of Famer and world champion, right? So things end up really good for Frankie Edgar. Strangle Gang, I always appreciate you guys. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and if you want to watch more videos like that one, click one of the playlists that are about to pop up now.